Good morning students. Welcome to our new class uh, for tool technology. So today we are going to talk about driving and cutting tools. So let us first of all see uh, what is uh, what do we call driving tools. So you can also follow in your book. So driving tools are basically tools used to push uh, that is drive another objects into the working materials. So we have sometimes some objects which must be inserted to fix uh, or to assemble uh, materials together. So for example, nails and screws must be forced into the materials, uh, but we cannot do it with our hands, bare, uh, bare hands. So we have to use special tools for that. So the tools used to push to drive nails and screws in the material are called driving tools. Okay, so their general purpose is to connect two pieces together or to deform material. So let us see some examples of driving tools. So the first driving tool is the wooden mallet. So we have different types of mallets, okay? So they are used uh, for assembly uh, of wooden parts. They are also used to strike wood chisels and they are available in different types as, as I said, okay? So this, uh, these are some uh, examples of uses of, of uh, mallets. Uh, they, we use them to strike chisels, okay? Uh, we have also the ball pain hammer, which is also a driving tool. So that generally uh, the ball pain hammer, there are different types of hammers, but uh, this one is a ball pain hammer. It has a rounded part uh, at the top. Okay. Um, it is used principally to drive nails. Okay. Don't uh, to fix nail into, into timber, uh, as we see in, in the picture here. So we strike the nails. So you can also use uh, use it with dot or center punch. Okay, you have uh, seen the dot punch and center punch in the marking tools. So you can use the the ball pin hammer to strike the center punch or the dot punch. Uh, there are also a process called riveting, uh, which we will see uh, in another chapter, where the ball pin hammer is used to bend sheets of metals or to bend metallic materials. We can also use the ball pin hammer to strike the material when bending. Okay, so this is a picture showing how to use a ball pin hammer with the center punch. So ball pin hammer are available in different types. Okay, there are different sizes and weight of the hammer depending on the work we are doing. So another driving tool is the screwdriver. So as the screwdrivers, they are available in different types. Okay, um, how you see on the picture. So they are used to drive or to withdraw screws from materials. So it is available in flat blade, okay, uh, in cross blades, okay. And uh, also we call it post drive. We have, we have uh, driving scr uh, screwdrivers which are uh, which can be adjusted to to size. Okay. So as we see in the picture, it is used to drive screws in the materials. So another driving tool is a spanner. Okay. The spanner. Uh, there are different types of spanners. Okay, to, to, which we use to tighten and loosen nuts and bolts. So they are available in different sizes also. Okay, so the, as you can see in the picture, this is an essential tool uh, to, to, to tighten and to untighten nuts and bolts. Okay, uh, we have also the uh, uh, one which is adjustable, the third one below is an adjustable spanner. 
So it is a very uh, useful and important tool in the workshop. So another, so then we have the cutting tools. Okay, so what are cutting tools? So they are tools uh, used to remove waste parts. Okay, so unwanted parts from materials, we have to cut them off. So we use cutting tools. Um, often marking out processes. There is a wide variety of cutting tools available for sewing, planing, filing, chisoning, and drilling. So these processes are all cutting processes, wasting processes, I would say. So sewing is a wasting process, planing, uh, filing, chiseling, and drilling are wasting processes. So we use cutting tools to make these processes. So let us see some examples of cutting tools. So the most common and uh, useful cutting tool is the hand saw. Okay, so the hand saw, this is a model of hand saw. It is uh, smaller at the end and larger near the handle. It is made in steel. Okay, and it is available in different sizes also. It measures from 50 to uh, 90 centimeters long. Okay, um, so they are used to sew large sized wood materials or boards. Okay, when we have large size uh, materials, we use a hand saw. It can be used also to um, to cut plastics in some cases. Okay, so, uh, so uh, it is used along with holding tools. For example, when we are cutting materials, I will send the picture, you have to hold them. Uh, firmly when you are using this tool. So it is used to chop out, to cut uh, unwanted parts of uh, materials, mainly wood and sometimes plastic also. But it is mainly a wooden cutting tool. So then we have another one, uh, the back saw. Okay, so the difference is that the back saw has a metal strip uh, and, the, and it's top to, to keep the blade uh, straight. So it is used to sew wood materials along straight lines and for cutting tenons. Okay, so for example, for small parts, to chop out small parts, uh, we use the tenon saw. Okay, the back, it's the back, it's the back saw. Okay, so uh, it is a more, it's more precise than the hand saw. Okay. So it has a back, uh, a steel back to stiffen the blade. So this is the steel back. It is a strip upwards which keeps the blade straight. It avoids uh, avoid the blade from, from becoming flexible. So it can cut precise straight cuts and smaller cuts onto wood and sometimes onto plastic also. So the cupping saw. So the cupping saw is another type of saw which is used to cut uh, small parts and curves into wood. So this is a cupping saw. It has a, a frame, a steel frame and a very thin blade with a wooden handle. Okay, so it is used to saw along curved lines in thin wood and plastic materials. Okay, as I said, it is used to make to cut curves in thin materials like wood and plastic and the blade can be rotated to any angle so you can rotate the blade to to to, to be adjusted to any angle so these are some uh, examples of for example here uh, you have uh, the blade cutting uh, a curve into into timber this one is cutting what is called, it's called a dovetail the very small cuts so the the, the blade can turn up then can turn uh, into the material to cut small parts, which cannot be done with a back saw or a hand saw. Okay. So then we have a hack saw. So a hack saw is used to cut metals principally. Okay. So this is the model of a hack saw. It has a steel frame. This is a steel frame and a a steel blade which can be uh, remove, uh, removed or replaced. 
So it is used to, to sew straight cuts in metal or plastic materials. So it has a very fine, uh, very fine teeth, uh, uh, a blade, which can cut metals or plastic, hard plastics. So, for example, plastic tubes, uh, water pipes, for example, is cut with a, with a uh, hacksaw or metallic tubes or metallic uh, parts. Okay, so there are different models of hacksaws, but they are all used to, to all the same use and used to cut metals or plastic. So it, to be used along with holding tools, for example, engineer's vice. Okay, or if it is a small material, can hold it with the hand, but generally we put the material in the, in the hand vise. Okay, like uh, here, a bench vise, an engineer's vise to cut the material properly. Okay, so this is not uh, to be used on two wood. It's not a wood, uh, wood cutting material. It's only for metals or plastic. So another uh, type of saw is a junior hacksaw. So as the hacksaw, it is used to cut metals and plastic. But this one is smaller. So this is a junior hacksaw. It is much smaller and it is used to cut smaller parts into metals or plastic. So to sew along straight lines for small light work and sew metals or plastic. So this is how we use it. For example, uh, to cut uh, um, copper pipes for, for plumbing purposes, we use a junior hacksaw. It's much smaller. Okay. So to cut curves into metal, thin metal sheets, we use an Abra file. Okay. So it's an Abra file. It's like a cupping saw. In, in fact, it's, it's the same blade, uh, it's the same frame. The frame here, the frame, and it's, it's the same frame as the cupping saw. Only the blade is replaced by a blade, special blade, which is called Abra file. So the Abra file is used to sew along curved line into metal or plastic materials. So to sew irregular holes in metals or plastic materials. So to cut curves where the, the lines are not straight, we use an abra file. For, for wood, we, we use a cupping saw. For metal, we use an abra file. It's only the blade which is different. So this is a, a picture of someone using an abra file in the workshop. So it is the, the workpiece is held into a bench vise. Okay. And uh, we can use the abra file to cut the, the, the shape we want into the metal sheet. So, another types of uh, cutting tools are shearing tools. Shearing means uh, that uh, we can shear paper, but we can also shear metals. Okay, so to shear metals, for example, metal sheets, to cut off metal sheets, we use what we call snips. Okay. Uh, these are some models of snips. They are like scissors, but especially made for metal purpose, metal cutting purposes. So to cut sheet uh, metal uh, sheet metal along straight or curved lines. So for example, the first one, the first uh, snip on the picture, is used to cut to make straight cuts. Okay, principally straight cuts. But the the two uh, other types of uh, snips below. They are specially designed to cut curves into metallic sheets. Okay, as we can see on the picture. So to, to cut off metal sheets, we use snips. Okay. Another example of cutting tools are called chiseling tools. So chisels, for example, those are wood chisels. So we have chisels for metals and chisels for wood. So first of all, let us see wood chisels. So these are some models of wood chisels used to cut and uh, to, to, to remove parts, small parts into wood. Okay, so they, uh, they are used to make grooving and pairing. Okay, they are available in different types and uh, shapes also. So, so th these are some examples of uh, how to use chisels, okay, to make grooves, to cut uh, joints for uh, wood for joints, to prepare wood for joints, and generally we use a wooden mallet to strike the uh, the chisel, 
Okay, the driving tool for the chisel is the wooden mallet as we have seen uh, before. But uh, there you are. Okay, so it cannot be used onto metals, uh, neither onto plastic. It is especially useful for wood only. So then we have the cold chisel. The cold chisel is a chisel used to uh, shear and to, to shape metals, okay? So these are some examples of cold chisels. We have different models and different uh, point ending uh, chisels. So these are some models of chisels. They are mainly uh, made into, into hardened steel, okay? It cannot be used into metal because it will damage the material. It is not as sharp as the wood, uh, wood chisel but it is used to, to cut and to shear me, uh, metallic uh, materials, okay? So, it is used with a ball pane hammer, with a heavy ball pane hammer. So, we strike the, the driving tool for the cold chisel is a ball pane hammer. Uh, we cannot use a mallet, it is to, uh, we cannot uh, make, uh, cause too much pressure into, into the chisel. So, here you are, so you can use it to shear metallic uh, sheets or to cut off or to bend uh, metallic materials. So uh, there are what you should know also some safety considerations when using uh, chisels. For example, wear safety goggles. Uh, goggles, sorry, wear safety goggles. Uh, when using chisel because they are flying chips we can which can enter uh, uh, the eyes okay the wood chisel can be pushed by hand for soft material for example for small work you can push the, work, the, the the chisel with the hand this is called pairing okay for fine chiseling or hit with a wooden mallet to make grooves a cold chisel can be hit with a hammer so another uh, uh, important thing to know the work when you're using chisel, whether it is cold or wood chisel, you should you uh, clamp your work, hold it firmly because it will uh, if it, the work moves, it can damage your work or hurt yourself. Then do not use a blunt chisel. So for example, the end of the chisel here, this is the end of the chisel which is blunt. Okay. Uh, when using such type of chisel. It will damage your work. So use a well sharpened chisel when, when you're working with, with, uh, with materials. Okay, do not use blunt chisel. And when you're using a cold chisel, do not use a mushroom head chisel. So this is a mushroom head. So we have uh, heated so much time that it has deformed the head of the chisel. So when you're using such, such a chisel, the, when you are striking it with a ball pin hammer, the hammer can slip and hurt yourself. So you have to grind the, the head, okay, make it flat and do not use a, a mushroom head chisel. It is very dangerous to use such a chisel. So the, the, these are some considerations you can uh, must take uh, for your own safety. So this is the end of this lesson. So we'll be meeting in class next week. Till then, keep safe.